It's 2020. I don't have time for cute intros. I'm waking up dark and early, doing my videos, editing my videos, chasing babies, <laughs> teaching kindergarten, and maybe finding some me time at the end of it all. So in the spirit of Vlogmas this time of year, I bring you a little Emily Awardsmas mini vlogs within the Emily Awards. Not sure if I've actually stopped and said hello to the vlog yet, but um, enjoying the snowy morning we're having here. Just got done shooting a part three of the Emily Awards. This is Wednesday, and this will cap off my finale video. What better way to have a finale than to do it with a nice little snowy day? So, have you looked outside and yeah, seen the snow yet, bud? Asking. A little more than they said we we're gonna get, I thought. I saw some pictures where there looked like it was a couple inches thick on some windshields and stuff. Yeah, I love that. Love that. Look out there. Look, you guys. Isn't it great? My viewers up in like Wisconsin and Minnesota and North Dakota are probably like, yeah, yeah, we've seen it. You don't need to, you don't need to show us. <laughs> much but we appreciate what we've got that's right Daddy, I got the candy, candy. Hi, bub. Hello. so there's gonna be ten uh, you got okay. three mm -hmm. guys, I am in a post-editing funk. I just hit it hard for about the last hour while mom has had the kids upstairs. We went outside for a little walk, me and the girls did. I mean, it's really cold outside, it's like freezing, but they're dying to get out of the house, and I am too, frankly. So we took a little stroll around. I got some dried, crusty stuff. Ah! I don't even know what that is. All I know is this week, like, it's Wednesday. I feel like it should be, I don't know, Tuesday of next week already. Anyway, just got out some dinner. I'm gonna run upstairs and get them. We'll eat. Bubba will be home later. Maybe kick back, watch a little Yellowstone tonight. We've gotten onto that. The doorknob? Yeah. Are you okay now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, bless your heart, Betty. Oh, bless your soul. Anyone else out there watching or has already watched Yellowstone? Thoughts? It's pretty intense. I think Kevin Costner's doing a pretty good job in it. I am super loving it. The setting's gorgeous. My friend described it as like Dallas meets The Sopranos. Hey friends, it is finale time. We've made it to the end of the Emily Awards. I got my Mary sweatshirt on, or there, Mary. Thank you so much for keeping up with all four parts of the Emily Awards. You are awesome. I don't know why I even considered not doing a finale this year. I don't know why I just thought, I don't know, briefly, eyes, lips, face, 
case and maybe I just wondered if anybody was really that interested in it but when it comes right down to it I know this needs to be done because I have some fun categories I do my MVPs most valuable products in this section of the Emily Awards I do some things that go outside of makeup um, just some other beauty related things and then this year new this year I think we should do this every year a random favorites speed round I asked on Instagram like what favorites do you want to know about and I'll do them like a bam 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 so I've got those categories and then I'll just kind of answer them rapid fire at the end but man what a week it has been working on these things and I feel so fulfilled you know this really it's fun and I love doing it but it is a lot of work so let me open up my details here for myself let's also have a swig from our little snowman mug I keep it over there on a coffee cup warmer. Great stocking stuffer idea, by the way. I use it every single day. So I have a category for best brushes in this finale, and I really try to not just go with a whole range of brushes, but pick out like a certain couple that are really outstanding. And first one that I would like to mention is the Real Techniques RT Go brush. This is a really cool little brush. Just in itself, if you look at this top part, it's this perfect angled size, it's kind of a large size, and it's really really great for blending out your foundation. I am really veering toward the side of like larger foundation applicators. I feel like the evenness of your coverage is so nice with that and just the speed overall. It makes sense. You use a larger brush, it covers larger portions of the skin all at once and you're getting done faster and you're getting, you know, less streaks, more even. The shape of this is so nice. It's got that angle and it is tapered all the way down the side. So, you know, you roll it on the side a little bit, you go over here, you whatever you need to do it can pick up product all the way around the side but I like how that little angled tip can really reach the small areas that's great but but Boing. We've got a little baby brush hiding underneath there, and that can be even better. If you want to um, like go on, on your under eye, and maybe you've just done your concealer, but you want to stamp over some areas that kind of collect, you know, those little lines. If you want to get around the nose, any small area, you know, this can tackle it too, but it lives right up in there. So I think that is a great brush. I've used it so much this year, and I would highly recommend it. The other one I do want to give a mention to, it's kind of random, but it really is a special brush, and I think it could solve a lot of people's problems with eye makeup. It's the Profusion, so we're talking another drugstore range here, Small Pointed Eyeshadow ES6 brush. You've probably seen me use this in some tutorials. It's a little guy, okay? But see how it's it's different from your standard pencil brush. It's got some movement to those bristles. It's not just like, let me show you a real short squatty pencil brush that really just feels firm, you know? This one has some movement and it's great in your outer corner. I've talked since like the beginning of time on my channel. Remember the Essence of Beauty Fine Crease Brush Duo? You know, these little brushes that you can use to very easily and effectively and very on purpose like shape your outer corner of your eyeshadow. It's control, baby. Okay, it is going to keep your shadow where you want it to be. If you have smaller eyes and you're going in with brushes that look, you know, like this size all the time and you're wondering why your eyeshadow is muddy, that could be why. So if you want to get a more pinpointed application, if you want to build up that outer V to look just so, if you want that lifted look kind of in the direction of the outer part of your brow, this can give you that. Also, it makes a really nice under eye smudgy brush. So I would really recommend this one if you feel like you struggle with eyeshadow or you just think, gosh, you know, that sounds good. I'd like to have a little more control with the placement of shadow. And then you can always come in with a larger brush just for blending. But this is about like placement and really getting it where you want it. So that's a great one and that's a Walmart find. I've got a category for must have tool and this year I'm gonna give it to just a workhorse product that never gets any love, but I know I've mentioned them before, but the e.l.f. $2 tweezers are the best tweezers. The best tweezers in the world. Okay, so we got tweezermen. I've used those for years. I still have them, actually. They're back there in that little drawer. But these are the best. These slant tip tweezers, they come together perfectly. That's a real important thing about tweezers is you need them to meet up just so. Um, but, you know, you can use them just for the flat part, kind of flush with the skin. If you really wanted to get that tip, you can turn them the other way. But they're just a perfect little set of tweezers and you can get them for a couple bucks. It's the kind of thing like I bought a backup of. I just keep it in a travel bag. If I ever travel again, I will use those in my travel bag, but I've got my home ones here that stay in a drawer and every single morning I'm going in, I'm going into this area and I'm like, yep, 
the unibrow grew back again and we get the stray brow hairs and we go around this area because sometimes and they are just a little gem and they're so affordable and it's just total hidden gem status there so this is the year 2020 you get your shout out I believe the last time I did a full out Emily Awards so the year before last I had a category for best dual purpose item and I think that's a fun category and the one that I thought of this year that I really is another daily use kind of thing is my ABH double-ended pencil here and I love it because I was drawn to use it strictly for one side and that was the matte side so it's called matte Camille and sand shimmer and I use that matte side to brighten up my lower inner rim it takes away the look of redness and it just you know you look a little brighter and fresher there but then as I continue to have this product I haven't done this yet today so I'll go ahead and do it now you got a shimmery side and that shimmery side can look so pretty just brightening up an inner corner um, it can look absolutely perfect on your cupid's bow area give a little brightness and light right there I like to put a little bit on my fingers run it between the fingers you can have highlighter you can have a little added glow right under the brow as it's actually intended to be used it's a brow highlighting tool but it's just so multi-purpose and those can also be like eyeshadows if you want to use it like a shadow stick on the eyes so I love this and I'm using it in a lot of different ways on a daily basis so I thought it was worth mentioning as though she never gets talked about. She gets talked about all the time. MVP for hair. Speaking of hair, I want to do like a mid-game change up here. I'm just wanting it up. It's the finale, folks. Anything can happen. We can go from hair down to hair up in an instant. There we go. A hair product that I really like, I'm going to shout out the shampoo, which a lot of people when I was like, give me a rapid fire random favorite thing, a lot of people were wondering about shampoo. I thought it was hilarious the amount of people asking about shampoo, but um, Herbal Essences, it's the Arabica shampoo that I get on Amazon, and I usually get it in like a two pack. And guys, the reason for this is my hair is very, very like slick and fine and straight. And when I've gone through the postpartum period with every child, I feel like my hair just gets crazy, the scalp, crazy with oil. It gets oily so fast. Um, I felt like for a while there, I was in a real place. Maybe it was after Biddy. No, I think it was after Belle. Um, I was in a real struggle trying to find the things that would get my hair just as clean as possible in the shower. And I was using like Neutrogena anti-residue, like the most just stripping stuff. And while I thought I got results from that early on, I felt like then I don't know what happened. My my scalp must have been rebelling against it or something, and I was producing even more oil. I finally settled on something that I feel gets my hair super clean, and it doesn't feel weighed down. Now, I am still a fine-haired girl who is starting to get the regrowth back after having a baby, so things should be thickening up a little bit more, but I'm kind of coming off of a thinner hair situation because you have that hair loss, period, and it's fine hair, and it can just get oily, you know, real quick. But the herbal essence of shampoo it gets it so beautifully clean like you're gonna get it clean you're not gonna have that residue feeling like did, uh, did I miss a spot is something wrong here really fresh and clean great scent on that as well but that has been the best thing like hands down I love that I'll keep repurchasing it until I can't get it anymore we got an MVP for skincare here and I would have to say it's the Estee Lauder advanced night repair I had been having a real thing across my forehead with little bitty bumps that some of y'all refer to as milia and I I agree with you you know they're like a non-zit <laughs> they're, they're a little bump but you know they don't look inflamed really they're just kind of there they're providing some lovely texture to the skin that you never wanted and never asked for and I was having that and then I was a couple weeks on that advanced night repair before bed um, this is the first step under moisturizer and that stuff was like out. I don't have that anymore. I'm not claiming that that's, you know, something this product would do guaranteed for everybody, but like that was the shift I made and it made a difference for me. And I just put that serum on basically all over the skin. I get it up to my under eye area. I get all around and I feel like it's probably got a lot of benefits. A lot of people swear by that. The last time I mentioned it, I saw a lot of, you know, positive comments for that product and I'm using it currently out of my my sample. My sample is halfway down. I've been using it consistently since, you know, gosh, 
how many weeks has it been? Using it every single night and my sample is halfway gone. I already have my repurchased full size that I got from David. By the way, if you need anything from Estee Lauder, contact my friend David at Bergdorf Goodman in NYC. He will hook it up. He will ship it to you. He will help you figure out what you need. But that stuff, I mean, I got it as a sample, just tried it on a whim, and it really has been great for my skin. I'm back to this nice, smooth place. Now, we've got some MVPs for each of the video categories that I've already done. So an MVP face, eye, and lip product. So that means I'm looking at all the favorites I named and I'm trying to come up with the, the biggest and best one. And this year I'm going to say the MVP for face is the Becca Under Eye Corrector. If this would have been brought up to me or shown to me like, you know, a snippet into the future, I might have thought, are you crazy? You know, I, when I first tried this, I didn't like it. My whole story on this is that I swear it had shimmer in it when I first used it and now it does not. But it's Under Eye Brightening Corrector and I think it's serving me in two ways really well. Um, um, number one, the shade. You know, it's really nice and light and it just is, it's such a brightening force on the skin. But also, it gives some nice moisture. It's a real sweet spot of moisture where I don't feel like, oh, that's so goopy, that's so heavy. But it provides a little something to where I feel like I can put this on, which I'm wearing it today, and then maybe put on a little dot of a skin tone concealer over top, whatever concealer it may be. And this practically primes that under eye area for anything else that comes and it makes it just more moisturized and more receptive to any other kind of concealer product. So I have really loved this stuff. I think it's a worthwhile purchase and it's the kind of thing like once you see how brightened up it makes this portion of your skin, you want to use it every day. And so there are so many different parts of my makeup routine that I'm really switching up every day. So to have a constant, I mean, I feel like that's important. That's saying something. My MVP for eyes, I'm going to give it to the IT Cosmetics superhero mascara, y'all, because I think back to the past year and all the times that maybe I went light on the eye makeup, but I knew that if I put on my It Cosmetics superhero, my lashes were going to look like something, you know, and I've got it on today. I just did, I'm actually wearing the Corda Rosa palette without any eyeliner, and I just popped this on because I feel like, you know, there's a lot of impact from this mascara just with this alone on without having a liner look. I like the shape of the brush. I didn't really talk about that too much before in the eyes video, but it's not oversized, you know? It's got a hint of a taper toward the tip, and I just find it easy to manage, um, easy to get through the lashes, builds up quickly, dries quickly. So that is going to be friendly to the curl holding, and I just think it's an important product. It's got to be named. And then Lip MVP. It is 2020. It is the year of the mask, so therefore I'm going to give it to the thing that flat out wears like iron all day. And it is not a brand new product this year. It is just a great product that I've kind of fallen fallen back in love with, and it's the Super Stay Matte Ink. I mean, as much as I love the crayons, I gotta say, what's the longest lasting? It is this one. And if you got a good method to apply it, which I've shown you, you know, bottom lip, mwah, blot to the top lip, smooth it out, don't go back for more, you're gonna have a thin, most comfortable application of this stuff. So the shade I'm holding up is called Lover. This is what I wanted to wear on my lips today, but I have got to actually go through my full lip try-on for the lips video after I shoot this, so I can't have anything too long wear sitting on my lips right now. Right now I'm actually wearing a True Gloss from M. This is the uh, Tender Rose M Cosmetics. Love that. Anyway, Super Stay Matte Ink. If you need long wear, if you want to be able to go from mask mode to non-mask mode and be like, yeah, I still got lip color on, ta-da. It's great. I'm so excited. It's time for my random speed round. Um, just a handful of questions that you guys asked on Instagram. Favorite book? Right now, um, well, let me open up my Audible. Why make it a short story when you can make it a long one? <laughs> right now I'm listening to The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle, and I, I really do enjoy that. It gets very... Um, deep, dense with info. I think maybe a favorite one recently has been Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life by Wayne Dyer. I'm not saying I don't like The Power of Now. I just think um, maybe that's a little bit harder one to passively like be doing something and listening to. It's like sometimes you got to stop everything and really think about what he's trying to tell you. But Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life by Wayne Dyer. Um, you can take that very easily, one portion per day, and it's nice little nuggets just to keep the positive thinking on track. You know, I feel like I'm a pretty positive person, but 
it doesn't happen just by magic, you know. I think you have to, on purpose, make sure that your thoughts are not directed in a place where you could go to worry, you could go to anxious feelings, or you could go to fear. It's kind of taking a little bit more control over those thoughts. And the power of now is really teaching you how to fully be present and value that present moment. So those are a couple I've liked. Gosh, what else do I have here? I liked Live in Love by Lauren Aikens. Um, that was a little bit more of like an autobiography type book. She is... Um, Thomas Rhett's wife, and anything by Brene Brown. I got several that I've listened to from her. Favorite snack? I really have been loving the Orville Redenbacher's. It's the kettle corn microwave popcorn. I think it's the best microwave popcorn. It almost fully pops, you know, like without a lot of extra little kernels. Love that. Ice cream? Love me a mint chip. Give me mint. Actually in any format. You know, the green mint, the Briars type kind. Um, Aldi has a good like dupe for that Briars, like white mint chip. This time of year, a peppermint ice cream. Love it. It's like, get me as cold as possible. <laughs> ice cream isn't good enough. Make it minty and cold. Fast food. I'll take a Burger King Whopper meal, please. And I will take a um, Taco Bell cheesy gordita crunch. Beverages? Uh, for me, it's like water all day, every day. I will tell you what, I have not backed down one bit since I did videos back in the spring talking about how I thought hydration was a big key to steering clear of migraines. And I'm going for like, I, I do a half gallon. It gets me through most of the day. I refill my half gallon jug and I go through most of that until bedtime. So we're looking at nearly a gallon a day and that's working so well for me. And I've not backed off of that a bit. So water primarily, I do have a cup of coffee in the morning right when I get up. A lot of questions about alcoholic beverages. Um, let's see, I'll take a beer. I'll take a Bud Light, a Miller Light. Wine is fine too, but the other night, like, we had pizza and some wings. It, like, hot buffalo wings. And it was Friday night, and we're having fun, and I just thought, you know, there is definitely a taste connection between having your cold beer at the end of a long week and some hot wings. Um, comfort food. I love some fried chicken. Um, my sister makes an incredible chicken pot pie. Those are two things that really come to mind. Favorite crock pot recipe would be my chili that I make. Love it. And I do kind of a taco chili as well, like a little bit of a tweak on the recipe that makes it a little bit more like Mexican inspired. Those two soups, I make them a lot, like large batches that we can have throughout a week. And then also my chili is thick enough that you can make a Fritos chili cheese wrap on a tortilla. Sonic had something like that and I recreated the same darn thing, but I like my chili even better. I know I need to get some recipes up in here. I'll be doing that because my recipe has evolved from an earlier beauty vlog cast video that I did sharing my chili recipe. It's kind of changed a little bit from that. Not a whole lot, but some. Uh, favorite candy is the question. Uh, jelly Belly Jelly Beans or give me a Tootsie Pop. Show? Probably Schitt's Creek. From this past year, that's the most memorable, the most just beloved show for me. Um, we are currently watching Yellowstone, though. Kids' clothes. Whereas I feel like I'd normally be out in a Walmart or Target more often and just buying clothes from there. But it's just harder. I'm not going out and just, like, browsing the stores. I'm really not. Just trying to limit exposure, you know? Cases are on the up and up where I live, and I'm just trying to stay home. So I find myself ordering clothes from Carter's. Um, Bubba's gotten a lot of his little clothes from there. And h and has some adorable stuff. The dresses from our family pictures for the girls came from there. Um, some cute little casual like sweatsuit sweatshirt things for Bub I got from there. I'm gonna be going back and buying more from that website. Affordable but very like stylish cute stuff. Toys for the kids. Um, okay, I think the best toys, the girls are loving Polly Pockets, and I must say, Polly Pocket, like, I, we held on to the classics. My mom kept them for me, and the girls like playing with those. But the revamped Polly Pockets are actually really cute, too, and a lot of details, and they can play for a long, long time with those. And if they're like, Mommy, come play with us, like, I like to play with that, too. Calico Critters. We are a big Calico Critter family here. We've got a lot of the stuff. We've got a great little play table where the village sits, as we call it. And even Bubba, he likes to go through and, you know, pick up the little animals and look at them. And overall, for young kids, Fisher-Price little people. I mean, the houses, the 
characters, the whatever, like there's Disney princess themed ones, there's just kind of regular ones. There's all the things that have the little cars, are they called wheelies or whatever? Bubba's real into that. But there has been some little people stuff that we've had since Belle was like one year old. Okay, she's now six and we're still playing with and using all that stuff. I'm talking houses with moving parts and sounds. And kids can be rough on toys sometimes, but it's all still working. I've never had a Fisher Price little people thing like go down and had to be thrown away or something. And last question, kitchen, appliance, I'm gonna say the air fryer. I have bought a lot of gimmicky kitchen stuff, but that, my friends, like I use it every day, every other day in some form or fashion. It's great for kids because you're working with maybe some smallish portions and you can just like, boom, get it crisped up nicely to where it's not like soggy microwave food. Sometimes we got the soggy microwave thing going on, but it really, if you have a choice, the air fryer is so much better for so many things that you can make. I could do a whole video on that. But guys, we're at the end of the Emily Awards. Thank you so much for watching. I'm so glad you enjoy this series. I hope you will subscribe to my channel if you're not already already. Uh, give the video a thumbs up. Stay tuned for just the regular videos that I do on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm always open to requests, so please let me know what you'd like to see, and I will be back. I will see you again very soon. Bye, friends.